It's highly likely if you're an owner of a smart trainer or a power meter, you have encountered dropouts or signal problems with those devices. If you haven't, you are very, very lucky. In the majority of cases, you won't notice these happening because in the background, the software that we use will take care of it. The head units we have will just smooth over any issues. But what will occur if there's enough of them happening, you'll get lagginess, you'll get slow response in sim mode, slow response in erg mode. And if there's enough of them occurring, you will get those dropouts and you'll get that zero power on the screen and you'll be going nowhere. Very frustrating. Ideally, we want a clean, strong signal from our devices up to our receivers, such as your PC, Mac, phones, tablets, whatever. And in the past, we've used things like USB extension cables to get the USB key or the USB receiver away from the computer and all that signal and noise closer to our device so it can have a strong signal. And also we've moved away from channel 10 on 2.4 gig Wi-Fi, or ideally we've moved up to five gig Wi-Fi to get rid of that 2.4 interference that could be taking place. Today, I'm gonna to run through one extra step we can do with the Tax Neo 2 to give it a little boost with its Ant Plus signal. The Tax Neo 2 Smart Trainer has a few ways to communicate to our receiving devices, so Mac, PC, tablets, etc. They are Ant Plus Private, Ant Plus FEC, and Bluetooth. Now, what happens with the two Ant Plus signals that are being sent out is there is occasionally some overlap. Now, this overlap will be happening in the background. You won't notice it. However, it's still occurring. It's kind of tripping over its own shoelaces there, sending out two Ant Plus signals. So that is a very high level explanation of what's going on in the background. Typically you won't see this, but you may be encountering the effects of this. So what we can do with those two Ant Plus channels that are interfering with each other is just to simply disable one and have Ant Plus FEC and Bluetooth, which is really all we need indoors. If you're wondering why we need to do this, because Ant Plus has built into the protocol protection against collisions and hundreds of devices all talking at once in one environment, well, this comes back a little further. This is to the source of the data before it's even sent out to the airwave. So what we want to do is make sure that there's no collisions or errors happening on the device before it's getting sent out. And this will get it done. Jumping straight into things here in the Llama Lab to perform two tests today to see what changes. So we're pairing the Tax Neo via FEC to controllable trainer, Tax Neo FEC to the power source. You can also see the Ant Plus power there as well. We won't be needing that. And then the cadence sensor, again, Tax Neo FEC 1733. You can see there there's three cadence sensors coming from the unit, which we really don't need. We're going FEC all the way today for all these tests. So that's selected here. Okay, trifecta in place, FEC all around using Ant Plus. And let's jump in for the ride. And yes, I will admit, Veronica, my wife, did the testing here for me during her training session. So the test involved five kilometers and 10 minutes of riding before we had a look at the log files. With my first 10 minute test now complete, I'm going to drop the log file from Zwift over onto Zwiftalyzer and have a look at the Ant Plus stats that this tool provides us. So really cool little website here, zwiftalyzer.com. I will link below in the details. It's been around for a while, this site, and it's very, very handy for exactly this. So what we're looking at here is channel one device 1733, tax model 2850, the Tax Neo 2. We can see there the average RX fails 16.25%. So not too bad, but still not 0% failures. So you can see the graph there. So 16.25, now this is with both Ant plus signals taking place or Ant plus signals broadcasting, but only one use. I'm only using FEC. So the other one is unused and is getting in the way. Now, any excuse to pull up a terminal window, let's have a look at the exact amount of the word fail in that log file. We have 610 instances of the word fail over just 10 minutes on Zwift. Okay, into the toolbox and something pretty cool. Now this is the NPE WASP, which will pick up all the signals in the Llama Lab here and tell me what's what. So we can see an Ant Plus cadence sensor here on the bike. We can see 1733 power, which is the Tax Neo 2. 1733 speed and cadence, which again is the Tax Neo 2. And we can also see there the FEC 1733, so the fitness equipment control. So, we can see from here, the FEC, which is really all we need, but there's also that legacy 
speed and cadence sensor, and power meter from 1733, which are the two things we want to disable. So to disable those, we jump over to the Tax Utility app. We connect to the Neo 2 over Bluetooth. So we need to make sure nothing's connected to the Neo 2 over Bluetooth at this point in time. Once that connection is made, we go to Device Settings. Scroll down to Connection Settings. You can see there some users may experience problems maintaining a stable connection due to Ant Plus interference. Disabling this when not using Ant Plus is recommended. Now we can still use Ant Plus FEC. It's just Ant Plus. So we've disabled that, jump back to the WASP utility, and we can see now that the power meter for 1733 is gone and the speed and cadence sensor for 1733 is gone. However, FEC is still there because that's really all we need. Okay, test number two, same setup as last time. So over here to Zwift again, and exactly the same settings. And you can see there quite a few of the profiles have now dropped off because it's no longer broadcasting what we don't need. FEC controllable trainer, FEC on the power meter, 1733, yep, and the cadence sensor, which only has one listed, which is a lot cleaner and neater than having the three that were there before. Alrighty, cool, cool, and it's time for Veronica to ride another five kilometers over 10 minutes. Same course, everything else remains the same before we jump in and have a look at the log files to see if this has made any difference. Now to review the log file from ride number two with only FEC from the Tax Neo 2. And we will scroll down to the analysis and then we can see 9.33%. So not a total removal of all RX fails there or failures, but a significant decrease from around 16%. So switching between the two, so 16.25 there, and you can see the red line is pretty jagged over here, which is looking a lot better with 9.33. So nothing changed here in the environment whatsoever other than that toggle setting on the Tax Neo 2 to turn off that Ant Plus broadcast that just wasn't being used. And to look at the raw data, let's have a look at the log file here. Three hundred and fifty. So, three hundred and fifty versus six hundred and ten failures. That's definitely worth doing. So there we have it. Six hundred and ten failures down to three hundred and fifty over the same time period. There now, with no other changes made in the environment here whatsoever, other than turning off that unused Ant Plus signal on the Neo Two. Now, of course, if you've disabled those channels, you're not going to be able to connect to them because, as you saw before, they don't broadcast anymore. But if you're not using them, if you're only using Ant Plus FEC or Bluetooth to your Tax Neo 2, it's a no-brainer. Switch that off to ensure a higher quality signal from your trainer to your receiving device. With less failures now happening in the log files there with a cleaner signal and hopefully less work done at the receiving end to make up for those errors, I'll get a better response time, better erg mode, better sim mode, and happy days. All right, thanks for watching this one. If you do appreciate the work here on this channel, please hit subscribe, it's much appreciated.